under 30 feet, under 5,500 pounds, half ton towable with awesome road mode travel function. Folks, I think we got a hit on our hands. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bicious RV and the 24RL J Feather. She's like I said, 5,500 pounds, under 30 feet, tip two tail tongue to bumper, Goodyear Endurance radials, carpetless slide. It's something that gives you good space and an awesome kitchen in a little bit of a smaller to mid-size package that I think most half tons are going to be able to handle very well. Obviously, every half ton's capacities can vary a little bit along the way. This thing also, since there's no slides on the door side, it's just as good inside as outside. So like if it's a rainy day, you have a massive awning, or if you just don't want to spend all day inside the RV, you want a little time outdoors experiencing the great outdoors and do a little camping instead of glamping, you can do that. But that's the cool thing about what they're doing here with this J-Feather. We've got it outfitted today in a very park-friendly situation with a 12-volt fridge, and uh, by default, these have no solar. But you could uh, get these with a two-way fridge. You can get these with solar. They're inverter prepped. You can do some off-grid friendly things. You can spend time outside, you could spend time inside, and maybe you want to get one that's kind of built a little bit uh, either way. Uh, that's what's really neat about this floor plan. There's no one way to do it. Now, it's got a couple little caveats, like there's a couple little hiccups with the kitchen that as long as you kind of know that going in and you're able to work around it and understand it, I think this is a model that gives us awesome, awesome kitchen capacity and good living space while still giving us a private bedroom instead of a Murphy bed. Like you might have seen me cover a bunch of east to west or, or grand designs or surveyors or different things with big kitchens and a Murphy bed, but not everybody wants a Murphy. Some people are like, I want a private bedroom. That's kind of where this one comes in and I think it does it very well and I'd love to hear what you folks think about it. And you know what's cool about this one? The air conditioner. <laughs> so stupid but uh no all the windows the coverage this thing looks and feels so much larger than i think it really is but it doesn't feel superfluous it doesn't feel wasted it's just it's really effective in the big overall sense of space that you get now we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor today uh there's also the uh the vintage decor instead of the modern decor as it were which adds like a, a grayish kind of taupe sort of color pattern and um i like them both you know the 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 farmhouse i was just all about farmhouse and nothing else for a couple years and i've gotten a little bit of farmhouse fatigue i still like it but it's sort of like when you go to a restaurant and you have the same meal every single time, eventually you're like, I think I wanna try something else. I still like what I usually get, but I wanna see what else is out there. Now, some cool key details here and, and enough about my stupid anecdotes. Um, carpetless, uh, including uh, like slide matching flooring, which is my personal favorite, because again, it makes the whole RV look and feel bigger. Now, if I'm being super picky, I'm not a fan of big pedestal-based dinettes. I prefer some sort of free-floating table, or at least a single drop leg table that like brackets against the outside slide wall. North Trail does that. I think Bullet still does some of that. Um, but, you know, to each their own a little bit. Something else that's, uh, I think, really cool about this one, though, we've got it outfitted today with that handy theater seat. But notice it includes a pair of fold-away side stands that kind of swivel around, at, not fold away, but swivel away. And it's a, a it's wall hugger, basically. You, you don't have to wrestle with the thing every time you want to recline, which is still a thing in some RVs in the RV industry. You got to watch out for little details like that. And it's something that's um, easy for me to miss, and I actually want to come over here and pop a squat in the dinette for you, is that bigger vent fan up top in the kitchen and living area. So first of all, the stovetop vent hood does exhaust heat for cooking, but that thing right there, all the different windows in this, you can get some awesome cross breezes buzzing through this thing. And that's standard. They use a bigger vent fan here in the, the, the biggest room of the RV standard. In the bathroom and in the uh, bedroom, you'll actually see smaller vent fans standard. So every single room does have a ventilating fan, a power vent fan standard. The other two, if you want to upgrade, eh, not too awful hard to do. That just kind of depends on what you're looking for and how you want to camp. They've got the uh, the dark black like pleated blinds, the, the cloth pull down blinds all the way through this thing here. Um, but I mentioned, you know, it's a nice living space. It's got the seating of a super slide without the, 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 the length and the weight and the cost of a super slide. And it has a big kitchen. You have that huge extended countertop. However, it absolutely comes, like I said, with a couple caveats. 
Um, I, and I, that extra information, that's the stuff I want to touch on. First of all, I think the person who does the majority of the campsite cooking should sit in that uh, side of the theater seat that's currently, you know, like uh, over here. And I say that because of what's happening down here. Those drawers kind of get in the way. If you're standing at the sink, you're kind of in the way of whoever would be at that, uh, well, from the back facing forward right hand seat as we're facing it right now, left hand theater seat. So I highly recommend the primary campsite cook take that left hand theater seat so that, you know, when you hop up, you have full reign and full access to the kitchen facilities without having to, hey, excuse me, sorry, could you move, uh, get up out of the way? You know, that sort of annoying thing. Um, also, all the cabinetry here, it's all pocket screwed. Um, with it, so it's, it, it is, you know, screws into wood. It's called lumber core. It does have a sticker wrap on the fascia. So kind of keep that in mind a little bit. I'm not saying it's a full hardwood cabinet. You don't tend to get that until you go much higher in the RV marketplace. I'm not aware of a whole lot of travel trailer people doing anything other than that. But this is cool. You have a full overhead, like halo of storage. You've got the awesome double campsite window coverage over here. You see how they gave us a, uh, a, a pair of different kind of sink, uh, covers, and some awesome extended counter space. Now, here's the thing. On paper, when you look at this, you know, on camera, it, it looks like that's completely wasted space. There's no way I could get to it. The thing is, when you walk in this RV in person, it's fine. Here's what I mean. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Like, you're the pop-up power tower. That's the point of view that you're looking at right now. Right now, I'm standing directly in front of the kitchen sink to just to help get everyone their bearings. If I take one step to the right so that my leg is touching the theater seat, I can reach the countertop over here. Now I have to bend over a little bit. I have long arms and that certainly helps, but even my wife who's a little more gravity friendly should still be able to reach over here, no problem. The other thing is, remember there's the pop-up power tower back there. You have household and USB plugs, which one is cool to be able to charge your phone right next to the theater seat over here. Secondly, you could put something back here, coffee maker, toaster, put an appliance back here, which helps occupy some of that depth so that your counter space starts, say like a foot closer. And then we still have like two, two and a half feet of just unadulterated counter space right here that the campsite cook can go crazy on doing prep work. And you know, this is the thing that a lot of campers lack. A lot of campers just have jack squat for uh, countertop space. Um, they're like, yes, but we, <laughs> we have sink covers. You know what? It's not, that went exactly right back in place. I couldn't have done that if I tried. Wow. Anyway, you get the idea. It's not the same as dedicated, Oh, I forgot, I, I've got the camera just sitting on the countertop. It started bouncing and sliding there. Anyway, you get the idea. This is better than it looks. This is a model I think you really have to try out in person. And if you come to one of our locations and you get in this camper or something like it, and you're like, I don't like it. I don't care what you say, I don't like it. Don't buy it. <laughs> we have tons of other stuff that could work for you, but I like to do these little real world simulations. Real world simulations? Yeah, I'm going with it. Real world simulations so that, you know, it, it's one step closer to trying it on for size yourself. Hope you appreciate the extra little time here. And again, for reference, that's where the camera was. That was your point of view over there a second ago. And I mean, there's just a huge chunk of counter space that is always available to you. If you don't mind a little bit of reaching, it works out extremely nicely. But we're really not close to done with the kitchen space. Over here, you've got a couple different options. Right now, we're looking at the 12 volt DC compressor fridge option. Standard in this is a six cubic foot gas electric two-way. Now, hidden away behind that is actually a, uh, a pantry uh, or a closet, as it were. Um, it's at a funny angle that I really kind of struggle to get to from this side, so I got you a little extra snippet of footage the other way. Miniature sort of pantry tainment center right here, and then even down below the uh, dinette, we've got doors for easy access storage down here. And again, the um, you know linoleum, first thing that goes down on the main floor in the slide so that everything in here is easy cleaning. This camper does technically have uh, floor vented heating, but they keep the floor vents in, generally speaking, a mostly out of the way position where they can. Now, for entertainment. We started at the right hand theater seat. I just shifted over to the left. This is about as easy direct viewing, no neck wrecker kind of entertainment center as you can get. If we slide back over to the other theater seat, again, you see there's not a major difference here. That TV is not on a pivoting swing arm mount, nor do I necessarily think it needs to be because if you slide over here to the dinette, 
it's still unobstructed. And if you're at the rear facing dinette seats, there's no level of swing arm TV that's ever going to help you back there anyway. Also, that's kind of cool because they do give us just a switch for the lights up here in the slide, which I think is kind of handy. Just sometimes little detail things like that are a nice little find. I think a lot of people are going to say, ooh, can I get it with a fireplace? And unfortunately, no, you can't. That's just something J Feathers don't option. Even though a lot of their floor plans are just like virtually begging for a, uh, a fireplace. So if you think that this is something that should have a fireplace, leave me a little comment. And if you think that it shouldn't and they should leave it alone, let me know that too. And I mentioned travel-friendly access. That is something this floor plan really excels at. And if you hang with me in a few minutes, we're going to actually see the RV with the slide closed. But right next to the entry door, bathroom door. Hop in, hop out, whether you're traveling or even just at a campsite. So you don't have to track dirty feet through the whole RV. Down here though, this has huge space around that uh, toilet right there. I almost said hop a squat on the toilet, which now that I say it out loud, truly does not sound, one, attractive, and two, doesn't make any sense. But this right here makes sense. This is where most builders who make anything like this tend to screw the pooch and, and they get Pennywise and Pound Foolish. They don't give us any place to like put or hang up towels. Now, you're going to have to like roll towels up kind of burrito military style, but you can do it. And as I said earlier, this does have the uh, the smaller vent fan here in the uh, the bathroom. You've got another vent fan like that in the bedroom we're going to see, and you have the bigger vent fan in the living room. So you have lots of different ventilation going on. Now this RV is six and a half foot tall in the ceiling. It's a standard ceiling height, not extra tall. So if you're six foot plus like me, you're going to have to have your head up in that bubble. Now I mentioned different decors. One of the interesting things here is the bathroom will always be farmhouse, no matter what, which is why I kind of personally feel like this one jives a little bit better in farmhouse. Technically, the bedroom is always neither or both decor because it's just the darker wood that you see in the vintage or the farmhouse decors going on right here. Um, they do a really good job of putting a lot of good storage space here into a smaller bedroom. I got it kind of half open, half closed, so you sort of, you know, get an idea of what it looks like as well as the storage that's available to you with a full overhead cabinet, not just a shelf. Interestingly, they give you an overhead cabinet and an overhead shelf, and they give you the ability to convert your hanging wardrobes into dressers with removable shelving there. I threw the owner's manuals in there just to give you a sense of the space. But notice how that wall doesn't go all the way up to the headboard. And you see that little bat blue light back there. They have the little kind of headboard hidden pockets and there are household outlets up there. And I want to point that out because I think sometimes people look over here on the front of the cabinet, they see household and USB plugs and they think, oh, there must not be plugs back there. There are. So there's like eight household plugs in here. So if like you want a standing fan to blow all kinds of crazy air around here, you can do that. Um, couple things with this bedroom. Again, I always like to show you the good with the bad. If you're really tall like me and you sit straight up in bed, you're going to bonk your noggin. I've tested that before. I don't feel like testing it again today. I've already got a bit of a headache. Also, I see this a lot with Jay Feathers. It's a camp queen, but it's true queen capable. They left tons of room in here, which really makes me ask the question, why wouldn't you just go with the true queen if you already left the space for it? So that's that's my two cents. I'd be kind of curious to know what you guys think about that, but I got a feeling at this point I pretty much already know what that answer is going to be. Now, spinning you around like a record, baby, in road mode with the slide closed, you see that you can get to the bathroom easily from both doors. We're standing in the bedroom currently working our way forward, and what you see here is because uh, this one has the kitchen along the door side of the RV, it has some of the best travel stop functionality out there. It is both nap, snack, as well as craptastic. Uh, basically, whatever you need to do, if you need to stop, uh, you gotta get to the kitchen, you gotta get to the bathroom, you gotta do one then the other, then you gotta, you know, uh, sleep it off for the night. You can do all three. And as long as we are out here on this beautiful day, I really felt it appropriate to dive into the patio situation on this one. Because like I said when the video began, I think this one is almost just as good inside as outside with no slides over here and where they could put the, they, they maximize the awning arm on this. You know, they maximize the awning patio space to give us just awesome patio potential. 
Um, over here, it's not a full outdoor camp kitchen, but it's not far from it either because it does have uh, an outside fridge included. Now, this is a 110 only fridge. This is not 12 volt, so it's not operating in transit by default, but here's the thing. This RV is inverter prepped. Um, all Jayco laminated trailers at this point, whether it's travel trailers, fifth wheels, anything, if it's a Jayco and it's got laminated sidewalls, it is prepped and ready for an inverter. It's just something that they did a couple years ago that is just extremely not well documented and not well known. Um, it's also not very clear sometimes which outlets on which floor plans are inverted. That's something that our team can always look into for. If you're curious, let us know. We'll dive into that. But um, by default, going down the road, the outside fridge doesn't run. Now it's less of an issue on this floor plan because we have a, a easily accessible fridge on the inside. But um, if you do want to be able to run that fridge going down the road, you add an inverter, you can keep that thing running live. Just keep in mind, you might want to turn that inverter off sometimes so you're not eating your battery alive. You always got to be a little cognizant of those sort of things. But like I said, this thing's got a big awning. And I don't always have an uh, opportunity to, or the space or the power available to open awnings all the chances that I would like to. But today I did and I think I picked the right model for it because it is just nothing but campsite patio space here. Wide open, you know, you want to put picnic tables, chairs, anything you want under there. You've got all kinds of space and coverage. And look at the location of the entry door. It is an anti-spritzer basically, meaning if it's raining outside, a lot of RVs, the door is right next to an awning arm. So if you uh, walk in and out, you're getting spritzed in the face. This is not one of those. The speakers outside are a little high for my taste, but frankly, I just bring a Bluetooth speaker along anyway, and I leave my outside speakers turned off. That's just how I roll. Now, something I forgot to showcase for you, because I'm just dumb like that, is this does come with the bracket for an outside TV on this mount over here. And right below that, you see TV hookups and uh, the J port. So this is an like an avail. It's a two inch receiver hitch, basically, is what it is. But you can get an outside griddle optioned onto this RV if you want to kind of makeshift an outside kitchen. But the good news is below that, no matter what, no matter if you add the optional griddle or not, you always have the uh, little propane cooker hooker, as it were, so that, uh, you know, you want to bring your own griddle, grill, whatever the case may be, it still has that quick connect built right into it. Uh, and of course, lights at the base of the awning. Um, the uh, I kind of like them a little more when they're at the base of the awning because I think they're brighter. And when there's no slide on the door side like this, you get the whole awning light. If there is a slide on the door side, you'd otherwise, you'd lose a little bit of that if the awning went over the slide. Anyway, the baggage doors are slightly misleading, but still kind of useful because it does make it still easier to kind of get in here and get to everything. And that is a full true pass through. Notice how you're getting the big door and the full access on both sides. Now over here, you've got some handy household outlets as well as the switch for the lights on the nose cap. And as long as we're looking, you see how you got that funny bracket on the side marker light here. That is a side camera prep mount. This is a uh, side and rear camera ready. So if you want to add a full observation suite, you can do that. Here's another really cool thing for towing safety. Not just the Goodyear tires, but also the fact that this is using their J Smart lighting system. Uh, if you don't know what that is, basically, let's say you flip on your right hand turn signal. Well, especially from the front, you know, no one can really see on the trailer what your intentions are. But with the J Smart lighting, you flick uh, on your right hand turn signal and those extra lights on the upper left of our screen would blink along with your turn signal so that other people have a clue what you're doing. Not to mention, all of the lights along the appropriate side of the trailer also blink along with that so that other people have a clue what you're doing. Kind of cool. You're going to see in a minute we are roof solar ready, but if you're really looking to get juiced up, you uh, are prepped and ready as well for a little portable panel right here. Now, handy little pro tip, even if an RV doesn't have this, it's not a big deal. Those portable panels usually still come with a set of alligator clips that you could just as easily hook right up to the battery. Uh, well, maybe not just as easily, but nearly as easily because, you know, plugging just into that, I suppose, is technically slightly easier now, isn't it? This is really handy, too. This is the kind of little stuff that, like, this is never on anyone's list. I've never heard somebody say, I want an adjustable tongue hitch, um, you know, when they're shopping. But the, the height adjustment on that drop leg and that foot pad right there can save so much cranking time. That's another really cool thing on these, that until you put your hands on them and power them up, you can't tell. 
they are using a higher grade, faster moving um, uh, tongue jack on these, which means less time standing at the hitch, more time moving and grooving, basically. Easy reach battery disconnect. My only somewhat kind of complaint here is just if, um, you know, you do have shifting cargo, I kind of wish it was up a little bit higher, but I mean, that is getting awful darn specific. Down below here, we are enclosed. We are forced air heated. People are gonna ask, is it for seasons? And if you were going to ask that and I just answered the question proactively, at least throw a like on the video or subscribe or whatever you wanna do. Leave me a little note that says thanks, but it is not. Jayco has never cold chambered and tested these. Jay Feather's big brother, Whitehawk, is tested and proven. Eagle is tested and proven, but Feather has never actually been cold chambered and tested, to my knowledge anyway. And if it has, I'm pretty sure they'd be advertising it. Full outside utility shower and black flush. One of the other things that works really, really nicely on this floor plan right here is that it does not have need for uh, a uh, like a, a rear sewer outlet. It is a single consolidated sewer outlet point, which just makes uh, things a lot easier for a lot of people. Keeping the heat out of the RV and keeping the nosy neighbors at bay a little bit. We do have the dark tinted windows right here. Uh, it just helps keep the thermal radiation from the sunshine down. And if you notice those brackets up top, we are also prepped and ready for a uh, set of slide awnings, which or a single slide awning, um, as it were. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Let's get on the roof. Now, if you look over my left shoulder, you see a couple little black things there. The one at the front of the RV is actually the top of the black tank exhaust pipe, basically. And it's got this basically inverted airplane wing style cover on it. What that is doing is it helps pull the um, odorous uh, aspects of the black tank out of the RV and exhaust it more effectively so that you don't get that black tank smell inside your camper. Depending on who's downwind of you on their campsite, maybe a little bit, but at this point it's already up pretty high. So unless they're standing on their RV, not likely they're gonna get a big whiff of what you had for dinner. Um, <laughs> that unpleasant business aside, just behind that, we have another black thing. That is our roof solar prep plug, which by default, these are roof solar prepped. Remember, we're side solar prepped as well for portable panels. So you can do roof and side solar simultaneously. Um, they do have an available factory solar package, 190 watt. Uh, you could choose to get that. We could add an upfit to you, or we could kind of customize the solar package to really, depending on what you're wanting to do, almost, there's enough roof space up here. You could go pretty crazy on this if you really wanted and the budget uh, allowed for it. One other major thing I like to talk about on Jayco's is their Magnum Trust roof system. Um, one of the major differences on that, and there's a couple little things, but a big part of it is that they're, uh, we're walking on plywood instead of OSB. Um, there's a lot of different benefits to it. One of the major ones though, is that it is just more load bearing. So if you're in a place like here in the Midwest or someplace that just gets some huge, huge snow coverage, you just don't gotta worry about getting up here and blowing the snow off this thing or brushing the snow off it because it's kind of sketchy, kind of dangerous. And I'm not saying you have to do that in most trailers. I just, I know from years of experience, you definitely don't have to do that with Jayco's. So as always guys, let me know what you think. And if you appreciate the way we show you the road mode and, and the, the good and the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button, know that we'll shoot you straight. And if the problems that we've, or, or potential challenges, problems, whatever you wanna call it, I don't care, call a spade a spade, a duck a duck, I don't care. Um, if those are disqualifiers for you. Remember that we went out of our way to point that out. Give us a chance on something that might work. You might be surprised what we can do for you. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.